Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's more Vikings. Which one, Dan? This is episode 15, All His Angels. I don't know if I like where this is going. Yeah, Egbert's decided that Ragnar has to die. After many conversations, he's doing what he's got to do. Let's go face the music, guys. Skull, fam. Skull. I have a ship waiting to take your son, Ivar, back to your kingdom. I need to say goodbye to him. I'll have him brought to you. I want to talk to him a lot. You don't suspect that at all? Playing chess? Is that Alfred he's playing with? Yeah. We've orders to take the cripple. Look, I have a name. <laughs> I know, right? King Egbert has arranged for a boat. I'm not going without you. I have to die. And I'll die too. I don't want you to die. You gotta carry the messages back. Uh huh. Out of all of my sons, it was you I wanted to bring here. And it is you that I believe is the most important to the future of our people. Interesting. You have many gifts. You do not think like other men. One day, the whole world will know and fear I father boneless. That's a hell of a message for your son there. It's good motivation, though. Yeah. If this Hila is going to kill you, then me and all my brothers will seek for revenge. Oh, you must seek revenge. But not on Ayla. I know, but... Oh, shit. Why not both? <laughs> you play a hell of a game here. Uh-huh. He knows Egbert's the threat, though. Everyone will always underestimate you. You must make him pay for it. Be ruthless. I'm glad you were here with him. That was nice. But it's also symbolic of the conversation they just had, because now it's all about strategy. That's a good way of looking at that, actually, yeah. yeah. You have given me freedoms, extraordinary freedoms, and yet you have not claimed me as your property, so I'm still married to my husband in a proper Christian way. Mm. Okay. <laughs> not really, but okay. Poor cuckolded son by his own father. <laughs> I must do something that I would not wish on anyone. I have to commit a friend to death. Price of power. It comes with consequences. Mm -hmm. Well, I've no doubt Ayla will enjoy the sight of your death. I'll talk about the gods of entering Valhalla. Even though you don't believe it. I don't. It'll scare the crap out of them. Yeah. <laughs> he finally just comes out and admits it. Mm -hmm. This was your father's. May he comfort you as it has comforted me. Damn. I think it will console you to know. In the end, Athelson chose your God. Yeah, he valued his faith. He did. I've heard a lot about you. Killed thousands of my countrymen. He's a blind man. Mm. Could smell the fear of everyone around. They're terrified you're going to kill them. <laughs> God, look at this. Yeah, say she's not going anywhere. He's the only one getting any sleep. I know. The other foot. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Well, that guy needs to change his pants. Back to bed. These guys are scared of a guy caged up. These Athel stands? Maybe? I don't know. Where are we? I don't know. We do better to ask the horses. They're blind. When will we reach King Ailes? Not until tomorrow. Well, that can't be right, because he's supposed to die today. It will be at least another day before I am put to death. You and your gods are wrong. Mm. Ah. I fashion the course of my life. Not you, not the gods. Me. You believe that, so it is true. I forgot that he's blind, too. Mm-hmm. Your so-called prophecies are dangerous. By telling Lagatha that she would never have another child. Yet she got pregnant. Because of your words, she put her unborn baby in danger. Yeah. What if she thought her baby would survive, and now maybe she would be the proud mother of a healthy child? I see, I see where part of his argument comes from. Mm -hmm. You may be right, like not a lot, bro. And I may have been wrong. What did you say? I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, though. He might have been wrong. Maybe. 
brother. Sneaking off to go be with your buddy? I guess so. Lindisfarne? Don't kill me. That seems like such a lifetime ago. It was. And there you are. Waiting for your prize. Poor horse has to carry you. It's taken you a long time to return, Ragnar Lothbrok. But at last, you are here. You will atone for your sins against my countrymen. Don't count on it. Depends on what he means by that. So he's got to go through the humiliation of it, too. I'm sure he's prepared for all this. I don't know. They'll just keep him up all night like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. He's going straight up torture, huh? Come on, Ayla. Yeah, this seems real Christian of you. Exactly. God damn. Y'all are real tough beating up a guy who's handcuffed. These Vikings show up, man. You guys are gonna die. Ask for absolution. <laughs> He's not gonna crumble under your wake. <laughs> Ask for absolution. Screw you. <laughs> You took that well. Man knows how to take pain. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. How the little piggies was cramped when they hear how the home balls of it. I hate watching him get tortured like this. I know. The longer this goes, this goes on, the worse it's going to be for Ayla when they come back. He's got a blood eagle waiting for him. Damn it, should have stayed on the farm. His life would have been a lot better. I've forgotten what he looked like. My brother. This is how you know it's coming to an end. His life is flashing before his eyes. Yeah. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hell of a thing to do before you kill somebody. Is that great? Yeah. And they see each other, okay. I'm glad you're here. Oh no. Yep, the old snake pit. Ayla's specialty there, huh? You did say in season two you built this thing just for Ragnar. Jesus. Deliver me, oh Lord. Some big damn snakes. Mm hmm. Soon I shall be drinking ale from curved horns. I shall not enter Odin's Hall with fear. Go out your way. My death comes without apology, and I welcome the Valkyries to summon me home. Damn straight. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from my enemies! They're all getting a bite in.
you're gonna die now, Ayla. Oh, most definitely. Boys, you better put them bows down. These people will kill you and skin you. If Ivar tells them what happens now, that just might kill them. Oh, yeah. And shit. <laughs> King Egbert handed him over to King Ella, knowing that Ella would kill him. If I were to give him to Ella. It doesn't matter. Our father is probably dead by now. And we will have to avenge him. Uh-huh. Most definitely. We have something to tell you. Mother is dead. That's right, he's just finding out too. Yeah. It's true. Lagatha killed her. Lagatha is now queen of Katakat. Boy, there's nothing but bad news here today. They learn their dad's dead. He learns his mother's dead. Sheesh. Ouch. Who's this guy? I don't know, that was a hell of a close-up on your face, though. I say he's seen some action. He's pissed. God dang. He's not even sharp. You gotta be gripping that damn thing hard to make your skin bleed out like that. Man, what the hell. I knew this was coming, but I wasn't ready for it, actually. The passing of a great man. See you, Ragnar. Skull. Skull. So that was episode 15 of season 4. Mm -hmm. Seems so early to be killing off the guy that's been your catalyst of the show. I mean, because there's still two more seasons to go, but Ragnar's just gone. It does seem kind of odd. How many other shows do we see where they go on for, you know, 10, 15 seasons with the same characters, and now your, your lead character is gone? And man, to me, he's Vikings. He is Vikings. Yeah, I straight mean, up. So much of what happened over the last you no know, four seasons would never have happened without him. Now the children have to carry the carry the torch. I guess that's kind of the whole point here is that mm -hmm. nothing lasts, and in order for children to reach their full potential, their parents have to not be in their lives anymore because it's like sink or swim time for them. Very true. So I mean, we were complaining in the previous episodes about how you know they're all just spoiled brats who've grown up you know as royalty and really can't stand up for themselves as much as they talk about it. So this is their big opportunity because their mother's dead, their father's dead. As Ragnar's kids, they have an obligation to go out there and avenge him. It's really interesting too because, you know, in the past seasons, we really criticized all the kin slaying that goes on here because people are just constantly killing each other. Right. Over petty feuds, but it's, it's like, okay, now this is part of a grand plan. Like Ragnar is counting on them to follow through with this, otherwise his death is for nothing. Oh, well, that's true. And I'm kind of wondering what's, how's this going to play out? There's going to be hell to pay, one way or another. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like Ayla is a fool for doing what he's done here, because this is this is just out of petulance that he's doing this. Oh, absolutely. Straight up. If you were smart, you'd have never killed him. You'd have held him as a hostage, so that his people never bother you again. Yeah. He could have been leverage at the very least. Even if the folks of Kattegat don't care about him anymore, it's like you have you have their spearhead. Mm -hmm. You know, the person that made all this happen in the first place. And for me, it's like you just martyred him. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah, and I think Eckbert was counting on that too. Like, Eckbert knows that everything that Ragnar has done with, with raiding the English and French coasts, people were going to want him dead. There's no way they're going to accept him being alive somewhere in a cage. And he used Ayla to, to get it done. He knew Ayla would screw up, and he thought he was going to put all the pressure on Ayla. And Ragnar knew that too. Ragnar was smart about this. He's like, you know, make sure when you guys come back, Eckbert's the real target. Take out Ayla first, but then go get Eckbert. I say they're going to kill Ayla anyways just because Ayla did, is responsible for his father's death, but they know Eckbert is the, the brains behind all this too. Oh, sir. Eckbert's played a hell of a game this mm -hmm. entire time. Those two have basically been, you know, neck and neck in strategy, and I think Eckbert's actually had a little bit of a one-up on him. Mm -hmm. But this time, Ragnar has kind of paid the ultimate price to win the game. Yeah, so I think you're exactly right. He's made... It's funny how, it's funny how you said the chessboard there was symbolic. I think it's symbolic for them as well because Ragnar just made the old, just sacrificed the best piece on the play on the on the board mm -hmm. to checkmate him here. Yeah, normally you wouldn't give away your king, but he's actually sacrificing the king to win, that which is, is against, so interesting. It's against the rules, but it's gonna work. I know it's like rallied all the other pawns on the board, mm -hmm. and yeah. I, and that kind of fits into with what he was telling um Ivar there. Like you, 
you're unpredictable, you're, you're unconventional, that's going to play to your favor here. Yeah. And, and he's exactly right, because if, if Eckbert's playing chess and you're just playing to win, regardless of the rules, that's going to work in your favor. I can't wait to see what what becomes of Ivar here, because now he knows what's happened to his mom. Mm -hmm. He's going to be out for some blood, too, himself, for in another way. Shoot, Lagatha's is not safe right now. That little bastard crawling around looking for you? Yeah. I'm curious to see how that works, because if they plan to avenge their father, they need an army. Right now, Lagatha controls everything. Yeah, you kind of need her forces. So, do you overthrow her, or do you find a way to join with her? I don't know how this is going to go, because on the one hand, I can see why the sons wouldn't like Lagatha, considering they did, she did kill her mother. On the other hand, would she respect them, being Ragnar's kids, enough to say, okay, you know, let's be friends, you know, let's accept that your mother's a terrible person and move on with our lives? I see that working with uh, Sigurd. Mm -hmm. I don't see that working with Uba or Ivor here. I see, may, here's what I, here, here's, here's kind of what I see. It's like, they may decide, we have unfinished business. We'll deal with you later, Lagatha. But for now, we'll unite mm -hmm. and go and deal with Ayla and Eckbert here. That right. could be an option, or it could be like, or what you're saying could, ha could actually happen. They could overthrow, but it's like, Man, that's too much power struggle going on, you know? And I don't think they have the forces to back them up either, at least not at this point. No, nobody knows who you are. Why would they unite behind you if you kill Lagertha? Yeah. This scene, there are some areas where it's like, it's okay to be unconventional. This mm. part right here, you probably want to play some chess. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's like, yeah, let's let's be smart about this and keep these forces where we need them. But the thing I'm thinking too is, you know, when uh, when Oslov died, you know, she pointed out you know, that she was part of Ragnar's, you know, legacy. That her... her her job was to go out there and give Ragnar sons. Sure. And that, you know, it was fine for her to die at that point because she had fulfilled her, her part of the deal. Are the, are the kids going to see it that way? You know, if they're going to accept this idea of, you know, Ragnar being Odin's chosen and everything happening to fulfill what, what Odin wanted, are they just going to say, well, I guess our mother did her job and there's no need to avenge her? I mean, this is the way Lagatha saw it. Well, not Lagatha, I'm sorry. This is the way uh, Ashlug mm -hmm. saw it. Because that, wasn't that the first thing she said to uh, Lagatha? Was, I fulfilled my destiny here? Yeah. I think that's a possibility. I mean, she did it publicly. People heard her say it. It's not like they can, the kids can deny that that's, that's how she saw things. Will somebody tell them that? I mean... <laughs> I would certainly hope so. They may be going into, into this without all the facts. I'm just saying. Right. Even so, this is still Viking shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still, it, their their lives are a tale of revenge, so they still may want revenge anyway, no matter what her destiny was. And and as Ivar said, he's a very angry person, so I can't see him just letting that go too easily. No. No. I'll kill you now, I'll repent later. So, right. <laughs> that's how that's going to go. Uh. Well, let's go back to that prophecy that uh, Ragnar was talking about. Mm. It's like, he dies on the day that the blind man sees, right? Right. We saw a blind man in the cart. We saw the seer, who was blind as well, but I mean, he saw into the netherworlds, I guess. Mm -hmm. But there's also Ayla, there's also Ekbert there, and then I guess there's Ragnar himself. Mm -hmm. Who do you think was being referred to ultimately, or was, it, or was there no one answer? I think that's a very good question, because Ragnar's interpretation was obviously, well, it's the blind guy on the cart. That, that was the whole point of his conversation with the seer there, is it's like, you know, you said I was going to die the day that the blind guy saw me, but he saw me today, and I'm not going to die for at least two more. And, you know, it kind of felt like the, the seer was admitting, like, yeah, you know, maybe my stuff's not all that prophetic. Maybe, you know, a lot of it is just y'all's doing. And certainly that's an argument I think we've had in a few episodes throughout the show, too, is it's like, you guys are bringing this stuff on yourself. It's nobody else's fault. You make, you make a fair point because, you know, we're sitting there talking about, you know, Ayla is sitting here talking about, you know, removing his enemies and talking about, you know, God looking after him and all this stuff, but... He said, was blind, now he sees, or whatever? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And that's what the whole group is, that's what everyone there is saying, you know, we once were blind, but now we see. So, could it be that that's actually what the seer meant? The whole, the whole Christian nation says those lines, and so, in effect, they're the ones seeing Ragnar on the day of his death. I feel like that was incredibly vague on purpose, mm -hmm. and it's left up to your interpretation there. Uh, because it's, it's funny how poetic the blind man is also kind of an avatar for the seer mm -hmm. in, a, in in that conversation. I think that's very poetic in the way they put that. So. Yeah. It could be, too, the people are blind to Ragnar's strategy like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, they see Ragnar, they see him die. They don't realize that 
they're, they're blind to the fact that this is all part of a grander scheme on his part to actually destroy them. Or right, this could go even deeper here, and I'm about to blow your mind here. <laughs> okay. What did Sigurd say in the last episode? Ragnar can't die. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's the memory of him. When it finally dies is on the day that the blind man sees. What if it's like the idea of Ragnar? Oh, God, who can say? I mean, we're still watching stuff about him, so not anytime soon. Then it's possible we haven't seen that prophecy play out yet either. Right. Or or you can make the argument that it's referring to, like, Viking culture in general. Like, the day that Ragnar Lothbrok no, is no longer relevant to their society is the day that the Vikings die. Oh. <laughs> we're blowing each other's mind here, but, fam. I don't know. I, I think there are definitely multiple ways you can interpret it. And I think the show did that intentionally because they, they want you to consider that, you know, maybe this way is right, maybe it's not. There's, this is the whole thing they did with Athelstan. It's like, no, are the Vikings right? Is the Christian is Christianity right? No, who knows? He kind of go, he kind of waffles back and forth between it, as Ragnar has. Now, there's something profound about Eckbert being there in Athelstan's robes. Mm -hmm. It was almost, it's almost a way of the story saying, "We're both here with you." At the end, that's kind of nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, because really, those were Ragnar's two closest friends towards the end. They're the, at least the only ones that you know that really respected him. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, I think it's a good, uh, good observation. Yeah. I do want to ask you, though, since, you, since you're kind of versed in history, and maybe the audience might want to know, mm -hmm. um, is this about how it went for Ragnar? So the myth is that, yes, in fact, he did die for being thrown into a snake pit by Ayla. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't, the torture and all that stuff before that, I don't know. Probably something similar happened to that, I'm sure. But yes, that, that's supposedly how the story went, is he did die from being thrown into a snake, uh, pit of snakes. Because I thought I'd seen a small video mm -hmm. on this. I think it was a YouTube short, actually, that popped up not too long ago. Sorry, fam, I was kind of spoiled to it a while ago. <laughs> but, you know, history is what it is. There's no there's no mystery in history. So. Right. Well, there is, but... <laughs> yeah, well, not when it's written down, but still. <laughs> what I mean by that is the way the story that I saw told it is that some of his clothing was actually protecting him mm -hmm. early on from some of these snake bites, so he actually held out for a few days. Until they finally started constricting around him, wrapping up, and finding the skin. Oh, my. So he actually endured this for some time, I think. The show was nice to us, <laughs> right. and to Ragnar, and didn't put him through three days of being constricted on by snakes. The rest of season four is just Ragnar slowly dying in a pit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine three more episodes like that. Yeah. Some of that's probably a little bit of a bit of myth-making there to make Ragnar look tougher than he was. I, I think see that. I think that's kind of what he was doing here at the end too, when he's doing his no big show about oh Odin's gonna welcome me into Valhalla and all this stuff. One, he's trying to frighten the Christians by you know showing off that he's still you know this this big Viking warrior, but at the same time I, I think he's looking at it as that story's going to circulate. Everybody who was here and saw him die is gonna hear him say these last words, and it's going to you know prop up anyone who's looking for revenge because they're gonna say look Viking or uh, they're gonna say look. Ragnar went out like a man. He went out like a proper Viking. He went to Valhalla. We need to go out there and avenge him because it's the right thing to do. He said Odin. Right. You think that guy that we saw, that random dude with the eye missing, think that could have been Odin? That's a possibility. Because Odin's got an, an eye missing. He gave yeah. it for knowledge, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I didn't think about that, but you're right. I'm sorry. That, that's on you, Dan. <laughs> you're a genius. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I never said that. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It could be It could be Odin's avatar coming to uh, inspire the boys to actually... Mm. At least he didn't come as uh, Harbert. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this time, so they, they would have just killed him right then. And then. <laughs> yeah, right? No, that's some good context there. Good conversation. Um, I really love the conversations in the last couple of episodes. Really deep conversations. Yes. Yes. And it's, that's good. That's all credit to the story here. Mm -hmm. so, when it's a good story, fam, you can talk about it for hours. But I don't want to edit that for hours. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just say that. Nonetheless, the, there's a lot to be had there. I want to hear y'all's interpretations on the blind man as well too guys i feel like you've probably got some good insight on this so let us know guys because this is a this is a hard episode to watch because you know we we'd all grown up with ragnar and and his family and his trials and tribulations and now you have to watch it come to a, a you know a crushing defeat there but in the way he it's in a way it's not because he won so yeah He's, well, he, he will win. We, he will win. He, you know, he's gonna. <laughs> if he's in Valhalla, wherever he is, if he's anywhere, he'll be. He'll be getting the last laugh. I imagine so. 
But as always, guys, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. And also, if you feel like supporting this channel any further, I hope you'll consider hitting that join button to become a member. It's not required, and we certainly don't recommend it. Just kidding about that, guys. But we would love to have you anyway. But until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Skull fam, skull dance, skull group. Later, guys.